day, asking for your guidance, wisdom, and presence as we start our kids' church today. We ask for your wisdom and guidance for our teachers as they teach us today. We are excited to learn more about you and hear stories. Give us knowledge and understanding to know you more in our life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Morning. My name is Teacher Irish and I'm so happy to be with you today. How are you all doing? I hope you are all healthy and strong and happy. Can I see your big smile? And can we do a virtual high five? Yes. All good? All well? Are you all excited to learn more about our series? Of course. We say, yes, teacher. Of course we are. Are you ready? <laughs> we are now on our fourth week of our series entitled Not Things. We have been learning about see the seemingly powerful things in the Bible only to discover that it is not the things that have the power, but they were merely used by God to teach us um, something and to show His love. Remember our power too? Let's all do it together. Come on. Say power, truth. Power, truth. Let us have faith in God, not on things. Again. Let us have faith in God, not on things. And our power verse. Say power, verse. Power, verse. Let us look into Jesus. He is the one who began our faith and He makes our faith perfect. Again, let us look only to Jesus. He is the one who began our faith and He makes our faith perfect. These days, things must are required every time we go outside of our home. Even if we just want to go out in the bakala to buy something or if we, if we just want to play in front of our villa or in front of our building, we need to wear face masks all the time to protect ourselves from the virus. If you don't have face masks, you can also wear, um, use a handkerchief like this. This handkerchief, it could be... Uh, face mask as well. You just need to fold it like this and you can put a garter or a rubber band on it. That. Just put some rubber band and you can wear as it as a face mask. See? Mm -hmm. That's nice. But it's easy, but this handkerchief isn't enough to protect us from the virus. And it is definitely can't heal us from it. Today, we are going to look at a story in Acts that involved powerful handkerchiefs, like this, that could heal. Or could they really? Is it the, really the handkerchief or the apron that could heal? Let's watch this video. Great realization, Louis. Now return this cloak to the museum so it will be safe. I have to go somewhere. Sure, teacher. Bye! Check this out, Louis. The tracker on the widow's jar is working. Not the handkerchief. You are under arrest for stealing important artifacts. 
Now come out from behind your desk and put your hands up. Teacher, what are you doing here? Where is the mastermind? Louis, teacher is the mastermind. Guys, can you stay outside the door while we talk to teacher? She is okay. I know she won't hurt us. I'm so sorry, Rose and Louise. Even after all I've done, you still trust me. Teacher, we have known you since we were in kindergarten. You have always been kind to us. You must have a good reason why you are doing this. It started last year when my son, Billy, got sick. As I worked for the artifact agency, I heard some artifacts that were supposed to have magical healing powers. I tried to get my hands on them and bring them to my son, but nothing worked. I then sold them off or traded them to make money to pay bills at the hospital. I was already going to stop my operation because Billy has gotten worse and he's now in a coma. This handkerchief is my last hope. If this still doesn't work, I will just take him home and make life comfortable for him and stay home until he dies. <laughs> Why, teacher, what's so special about that handkerchief? Long ago, God did extraordinary miracles through Apostle Paul so people would believe his message of salvation to those who believe in Jesus. It came to a point that handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to sick people, and these would make them well. As I read about that in Acts 19, I sought out those magical items, but only one handkerchief survived, and I have it here with me. Please, please let me take it to my son. After that, you can put me in jail. Teacher, it won't work. Remember all the things you have taught us about the magical artifacts? None of them are really magical. It is God who heals. That's right, teacher. And you know what? Even if Billy's body will not get well, his spirit will be healthy. Billy is my classmate from Kids Church and he really loves Jesus. So even if his body will be gone, his spirit will be happy and alive with Jesus in heaven. You're right, Louis. Billy loves Jesus and will be so happy to be with Jesus in heaven where he will feel no pain. I just love him so much and wish he could stay with me here for many, many years. But whatever God wills, I will accept it. Louis is right, teacher. I have an idea. Let's go to the hospital and pray for Billy. James 5 verse 15 says that the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. We are so full of faith right now after all that you have taught us about the artifacts. Billy? Billy can't hear you. He is comatose. Doctors said he only has a few weeks left to live. Let's lay our hands on him and pray. Mark 16 verse 18 says that believers will lay hands on sick people and they will get well. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross so that our sins can be forgiven. I am such a big sinner. Please forgive me. I am so sorry for what I have done. I pray for my son, Billy. He is dying, Lord. I made the mistake of relying on other things and relying on myself to make him well. But it is only you who can truly heal. It's only you can, who can heal him completely. Please make my son well. We are believing in you and in your power to heal. In Jesus' name we pray. Mom, I'm hungry. Billy is awake. Thank you, Jesus. Have you enjoyed watching our Bible story? Again, our Bible story is from Acts chapter 19, verse 8, 8 to 12. 
The Apostle Paul travels from the second time to Ephesus. He went to the synagogue to tell the Jews about Jesus. But after three months, he moved to a school building because of the Jews were saying bad things about Christianity. The Jews who believed Paul's message about Jesus went with him. Paul preached and taught about Jesus for two years in Ephesus. And many of the Jews and Greeks who lived in that province heard the word of the Lord. God did great miracles through Paul. Even handkerchiefs and apron that had touched Paul were taken to the sick and they were cured and evil spirits left them. You see, Ephesus was the center of worship for the false goddess Diana. People there believed in real magic and many other practices that were not from God. God wanted to prove to everyone that He is the real and Paul was preaching the truth. That's why God allowed Paul to perform great miracles and other magicians that, that, could, that other magicians could not copy. The handkerchiefs and the aprons did not have power in themselves. But God used them, used it to prove, um, to prove that He is much greater than any other um, false God and that Paul's message is the truth. So, you see, in our story, it is not really the object that is much more important, but we have to understand that um, it is just the objects are just being used by God to perform miracles, but it is really our faith is much more important than anything else. It is about God and it is not about things. We will use any kind of paper. You can use wrapping with wrapping paper or you can use this newspaper also or you can use this crepe paper or manila paper whatever paper that you have then now let's make a template of our apron then let's cut Let's cut our template, apron template. You can use a ribbon or you 
you can still use paper for the strap and belt by cutting a long strip like this fold in half and glue together to make it more sturdy then make a short strap for the neck and a longer one for the belt glue on the waist and neckline Here is our nice apron. Let your craft apron remind you of the seemingly powerful aprons and handkerchiefs in our story. Why I say seemingly? I say seemingly because they really did not have any power. God was responding to the people's faith and healing them because He wanted them to believe Paul's message about Jesus. So kids, don't forget to share your, the photos of your craft before 8 p.m. on Monday. Before we end, let's recap our lesson. What city was Paul preaching in in our story? Answer is in Ephesus. What object that had Paul that had touched Paul healed six sick people? Answer is handkerchiefs and aprons. Did the handkerchiefs and aprons have had the power to heal? No. Who had the power to heal? Only God has the power to heal. Only God has the power to heal sick people. And objects don't have any power. Why did God use handkerchiefs and, and aprons to heal? So that people would believe that God is the most powerful God. And they would also believe Paul's message about Jesus. Do you believe God is the most powerful being in the universe? Okay, before we end, let's bow our heads. And put our hands together and let us, let us pray. Dear God, you are the most powerful being in, being in the universe, yet you love and care for us. Thank you. Please help us bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.